Hello and welcome to another jungle video and the first best junglers of season 10. Yes, it's quite early on in the preseason, only a few days down in the patch, but I wanted to wait a few days to see some stats come in and see what trends might be emerging before I release the first video of this type. Now don't worry, I will revisit this over the coming month and preseason as right, adjust balance numbers on dragons and other champions. But for now, we've got a good idea of what champions are excelling best in the new jungle in season 10, as well as who is using the new jungle roots and dragon priority to their advantage the best. And as such, this is not a cut and dry tier list, merely a collection of the best performing solo queue junglers right now. So hopefully you can find something in this video that you can try out at the start of season 10 and hopefully rake in some wins as you learn the new jungle. And perhaps you could comment below what champions you would like to see guides for over the next couple of weeks. And finally, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video and are excited for more to come. And with that out of the way, we jump into our first page and you will see the icons for the recommended MMRs for these champions as we go throughout the video. And we will also have a high and low MMR page as well as a page for sleeper picks that you can consider trying out. Now, as you can see here, Echo, Kha'Zix, and Shaka are still the top three performing junglers. Turns out when things are great at skirmishing, clearing, surprising, have, you know, maybe little boxes and some backstabbing, they are going to be strong no matter the meta. Echo, I think everyone will agree, is top tier. His early game, mid game, and late game are all strong. People are even going for that Dark Harvest to amp him up even more. And he seems to have good win rates and performance no matter your elo. The shift from the season 9 to season 10 jungle hasn't really changed much. He can still clear fast, he's great at doing dragons, which are even easier to do now. His ganks can be devastating when you land a W, and late game he has the safety of that low cooldown R. And as such, I recommend you go get those true damage echo skins while you can, and run around before Riot decides that this is not okay. Now Kha'Zix on the other hand, I don't think we can ever have a tier list or top junglers without him. Seemingly he is ever present as the most dynamic assassin. Yes, his power curve is a little bit less than it was in Season 9, his clear potential not being as strong as the echo, but with all the skirmishing and the fighting around these dragons and neutral objectives, his R evolve, his Q evolve, whichever you decide to go, is always very strong and a good team fighting assassin in solo queue who can still use the new Conqueror. It's not as strong as the old Conqueror was, but that doesn't mean it's useless. Electro Q just has parity in terms of win rate at the moment, so it's basically down to your choice and what team comp you're facing, but nevertheless, he deserves his spot on this page. Now, Shark, I'm not going to talk a lot about because you all know my abomination remarks from the previous video. The mains of this Jack in a Box weird puppet master thing kind of think that he's always weak and he's always a minion. Well, guess what? The win rates have been supporting his power level for well over a year. The changes they just did made him stronger in the early game and now he's even more annoying. Just because you don't see him in every high elo stream doesn't mean he isn't effective overall. One tricks of this champion still find success and they're still finding success in season 10. And now that that's out of the way, we can look at the two new guys on the front page here, Nocturne and my main Warwick. And Season 10 has only made him stronger for the same reason Season 10 has made Nocturne stronger. With camp timers reduced and catch-up experience eradicated, that means those that can sequence their camps efficiently and quickly and leave maximum amount of time for ganks will have the best success. Add into that the ability to have a semi-global kind of ultimate as it scales up through the game, and you've got Nocturne. He blinds the enemy laners, he picks off any split-pushing ADCs, he can gank pre-6, he has insanely fast clears, he can solo the dragons, he's got point-and-click CC on lanes who don't have flashes or dashes up, as well as a spell shield that protects him from obnoxious CC. It's a perfect thing you want in a jungler in a fast farming, high skirmish meta. And for the same reasons, Warwick has also had a lot of success. Because he can rotate around the map to low HP targets very quickly, and as well as the fact that he has strong CC and lockdown potential, means that when you add that together with his ability to solo a dragon from the get-go, and basically set your team up for success going forward, you're probably looking at a very strong total package. Again, he also likes to skirmish in that early to mid game, and so his power spike is very apparent. And on that note, no longer just a random little snowman, he is a full-fledged viking running around the rift, farming very quickly, he likes getting low, he can solo objectives, and the fact that his power spike is in the early to mid game, Olaf is showing a lot of strength in the current meta. Obviously, considering the nature of his kit pressing R and making him immune to CC, but not having any lockdown himself means he does perform better in diamond and above when teams know how to close games, they know how to chain CC together, they know when to pounce once he hits that one axe that he can keep throwing at you. But that conqueror synergy with the healing as well as his own built-in lifesteal as he gets lower health means that if you like to farm efficiently and you enjoy running as fast as you can at any one's face, this is the guy to go. However, I will say this as we head on to the next page, Javid and Vi provide a much more well-rounded option for those mid and low MMR players. You won't see Vi a lot in high MMR games on Twitch, you will see a lot of Javid, but the fact that they're kind of similar champions in that way means they both fill the same needs in terms of tankiness, bruiser, lockdown, can build kind of AD, great at soloing dragons, mid-game teamfights can be won entirely by your decisions. That's why they're so useful in this current meta, and they will sort of be meta transcendent. You will always see them unless their kits are inherently countered, 
or just really weak. On that note, with the Aftershock shifts, Nunu will lose a little bit of that early game strength, but late game become very, very dangerous. The fact that everyone is fighting over dragons and heralds, if you just want to go and secure those yourselves without having to worry about steals, strap onto the Yeti and go for a ride. Their versatility and utility still exists in the same way as an objective controlling jungler and in a meta that's focused on skirmishing and, you know, objectives, the added bonus of having infinite amounts of CC and actually having a literal snowball shows us that despite Reddit claiming it's a tank meta, Nunu and Willem are still the best tank junglers in the game and the first one in this video. Now a lot of you obviously will think, well, Rukayu, you always tell us our hands aren't good enough to play Lee Sin and unless they can fully function, we shouldn't even try. And you know, you're, you're kind of correct there and that's why I don't play him because I'm old. But Lee Sin thrives in an early skirmish meta. He loves to fight, he loves to hit level 6 and have game-changing ultimates, safeguarding to his teammates. Everyone saw what Tian did on the world stage. I made a video about that last week that still holds true if you want to check that out about how to play Lee Sin. And that works even better in this current meta because there is no catch-up experience. That means when you get that 3 level lead on the enemy jungler, you can control the entire tempo of the game. Early ganks are still important. Dragon skirmishes are still important. The ability for you to invade buffs and remove the enemy jungle from the game is vital and when you can do that with Lee Sin or any champion for that matter, that's the game style you want to embrace. And I'm only recommending him because of course the Conqueror still works in him, you do have the option for Electrocute and his overall win rate is much higher than it usually is and he is still better the higher you go, however that usage rate coupled with that win rate is just so high you cannot ignore his power in the Season 10 skirmish meta. And that's where Master Yi comes in, maybe you don't like to fight as much but with low camp spawn timers you like to AFK farm as fast as possible then run at people with your ultimate and pick off low HP targets. You like to solo those drakes and take them as fast as possible. Master Yi is built to thrive in this kind of meta because while everyone's killing each other, you're farming up nicely, getting heralds, getting dragons, then you can run out of the jungle and get that pentakill. We all know I don't support this kind of jungle play style because it doesn't translate over to other junglers and it isn't inherently healthy. However, we cannot deny the effectiveness of our very own League of Legends Yoshimitsu. Did I say that right? I used to play him in the 90s in Tekken, but anyway. Don't forget that ganking is still a part of the game and if you don't want to AFK farm but you do like to exert ganking control on a map and basically provide that lane priority for those dragons, at least is still your go-to spider queen. There isn't really anyone who does what she does better. The fact that you now have that blue grump into red clear means that bottom lane ganks are free for you and much easier to take when you don't want to waste time doing a red crux raptors clear. I used her as a core example in the previous video so you can go look at that if you're interested in how to use her power spikes. And finally on this page we have Dr. Mundo. And I debated who to put in this particular spot. Do I want wishful thinking? Who would I think should be here? But at the end of the day, I can't ignore the facts, and that is when you have a Cloud Soul and a Mountain Dragon, when you remove true damage from Conqueror, you've got yourself a Mundo who, once he ends up farming a lot quicker than he already was doing, because remember Mundo wasn't your heavy ganking jungler, he still liked to farm a lot, now he's got even more camps, and he can get level 6 quicker, and he has all these drakes that suit his kit so well, he can be kinda dangerous, and also he can end up doing infinite amounts of damage. Much like Olaf, he will stick to an enemy target, he will run down an ADC and he will give them no escape and basically make everyone complain that tanks are OP even though it's just him. Regardless, if you're looking for a tank in solo queue in general, Nunu and Mundo still good to go. And he's basically our purple hulk, isn't he? And because it's pre-season, you know, ranked isn't taken as seriously, even though it should, you should be using this time to practice and get better at your champions and set yourself up for season 10 success. Nevertheless, here is your low MMR page and much of it hasn't changed. Volibear is still strong, but I feel like he's much stronger in low MMR than he would be in high MMR at the moment. There's a big disparity in terms of his win rates. Jax has fallen off because of the change in Conqueror, but he still does very well with PTA or Conqueror in the lower MMRs. His win rate is holding solid, but it really did dip down in Diamond and above. Although next time you're doing a Counter-Strike, you could try and say it did dip down a few times quickly. And so there's not too much more to add to this page. Amumu and Ramas are still excellent, accessible tanks that can help you win these fights in the mid game. You wanna win a fight of a dragon? CC wins games in low MMRs. CC wins games because people don't out of position and they will give you a free opening to lock them down. And if you put a few AP items in your Amumu build, you can look to burn them down yourself. But looking at the high MMR pages, nothing much changes over our core meta. Echo is still there, Elise is still there, but one champion everyone was super excited about with all those ocean bushes was Rengar. However, they kind of forgot the fact that the fire dragon burns down the bushes, so if you don't get any of those, what are you left with? Well, you just have to try and fit in as best you can, and his win rate has actually dipped in diamond and below, but in the master plus range, his win rate is still very, very strong. The lethality items have given him some more diversity in terms of his build paths, 
I know, I know there's one item that everyone thinks is super OP, right? We'll probably be doing something about it. They really did hotfix that. But the most notable two that you will be seeing on streams quite a bit, depending on the region, will be that Graves and Nidley pick. Olaf, of course, as well as you are seeing, as I mentioned earlier. But Nidley and Graves, definitely with the lower camp spawn timers, with high jungle pressure being required to secure those dragons, you want junglers that can apply their pressure onto the enemy jungler, take them out of the game, give your lanes priority, and the ability to be there for those skirmishes, because the last thing you want is to be shoved in as a jungler, lose camps with no catch-up experience, and be really far behind. And so fast farmers and aggressive junglers that can do that in kind are the ones that will end up dominating. For the same reason, Rek'Sai is still kind of good, but she doesn't really match up as well as a lot of these other champions, so I haven't put her in this list, even though as a lot of you know, I play her quite a bit. And aside from that, Elise will always be really strong in Master Tier+, Plus. Lee Sin will always be really strong in Master Tier+, Plus. Kha'Zix as well. You can even throw in Jarvan as well. There's quite an assorted bunch of champions that will always kind of have that presence in Diamond in Master+. Plus. I haven't put them here because this is kind of a cool page I just wanted to talk about in general. But as we close, remember this isn't a cut and dry tier list. There are a lot of champions that might still come up that we haven't yet discovered that people aren't really playing when they should be. So keep your eyes on those other tank junglers like Zac. Don't sleep on the Hecarim. Don't sleep on something like Skarna. And if tanks do end up coming out of the woods for jungle, top, and support, that Trundle pick will definitely pick up steam, as well as the Poppy pick. And naturally, also don't sleep on Kane. He isn't performing the best right now. He does have a bit of trouble when you can't get the form and the game is really out of reach. So you need to be able to skirmish and fight quite a bit to maximize his effectiveness. And hopefully he also picks up over the course of the preseason. So yes, we did talk about a lot of different junglers. The first two pages are their core bunch, so don't think I just listed them all for no reason. I hope you're able to enjoy the last two videos and they get you on the road to experimenting and figuring out the best way for you to play in this new season. And don't worry, I will be having a full gameplay breakdown next week so that you can see how to transition this all together to get good wins in a row. Don't forget to comment below which champions you would like to see guides for, to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and learned something from this video. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.